Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about Android malware. Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about malware in Android, right? It's, a, it's one of the things that seems to be on the rise. I mean, there was a, an article in the Next Web a few weeks ago uh, saying, you know, Android malware spreads like wildfire, you know, 350 new malicious apps every hour. And it, taught, it, it basically is based on, on research by a, an antivirus software firm called GData, who have discovered that there have been, you know, uh, that 750,000 new malware infested apps have sprung up in the first quarter of this year alone, right? So it's gonna be like the biggest year of malware on Android. And whenever they talk about security and apps, we always know, we know it's Android, right? It's just, you know, there's so many people, you know, such a big market and such a low barrier to entry that anybody goes in. And, you know, and it, despite the fact that you know, when you put something on iOS, it's a pain because you have to go through the reviewers and, you know, you can't just put it up there easily and you got all these hurdles you have to go over. It, you, you usually it's usually a little bit more secure because you know anybody can't just put anything on there and we've got so used to the fact that you know when people ask for permissions we just say yeah okay that's fine right and it's because it it's really it's hard to know you know like when you add a new a plug into your browser they'll say like this plugin can see your entire internet history or everything all the web pages you look at but you you, you know, but that's it could, but it doesn't mean it is going to. I mean, one of the things in my apps, like with EarSpy, you know, I get an email every so often from people saying, can you tell me why EarSpy needs to access my photos and documents? Hmm? Right? You know, and I say, well, it's because it's not, we don't access those photos and documents. Basically, we write when you, we have a feature where you can record MP3s and we need to write to that directory. So we have, we create one folder and we just write to that folder and we don't really look at anything else. But that's not what the permission says. So it's it's really difficult. And people are getting more and more uh, more and more skeptical about, about the security of these kind of things. Every time there's a news story like that that comes out, you know, people get more suspicious. And so it leads me to think about what do we do in the future in terms of uh, you know, marketing our apps to Android. I mean, one of the things that I did with EarSpy after after I read like an article like this a couple years ago and I put this little part in the app description saying we don't spy on you. you know, as, with the exception of analytics, I don't have any information about about you guys. But that still doesn't, you know, occasion people will say, oh it's it you know it has a virus or it's got you know all this kind of stuff in it. But it doesn't because I only I only use AdMob, right? This is one of the uh, yeah, I had one app suspended, or well, actually two apps suspended, and they had said that I you know, had malware in it, right? It was my, uh, it was two spy apps, right? And they only suspended the free ones, and they left the paid ones in place, right? And I thought it was, you know, I, I would have thought it was because of the content, and uh, but in the end, they, the description they gave, they said, well, it included malware, and back then I would just use. You know, whatever ad network, you know, trying all the different ad networks, you plug things in, try that, try this kind of stuff. And because that happened, right, all, you know, since then I only use AdMob or occasionally I'll use like other ad networks that are, you know, offered through AdMob mediation. And, that, and even then it's not that much. Right. I've told you guys before how I get contacted a lot by companies that, you know, they, well, first, they might have an ad network that nobody's ever heard of, which is, you know, which is really hard. Like, I'm not going to put something in my app that, that I've never heard of, you know, despite, you know, all the salespeople who call me. And sometimes they'll have, like, uh, people call me and say, you know, you know, we would like, you know, we would like EarSpy to include our SDK and you could earn $10 eCPM uh, without even having to display ads, right? And I, and I look at that thing and I spoke to one of them and they said, oh no, it's based on, it's for marketing research data. All the data is anonymous. All we need is access to your microphone, right? And I, and I thought, yeah. no, it was like, and it turned out like I would be making like an, I would be making an extra $10,000 a month, right? And it was like, and I have to tell you, it was tempting, but it was just so, so dodgy. I mean, it was just something about it just didn't sit well with me. I, you know, I, you know, I tried to do a little bit of research on the company. They had a nice looking website. You know, the salesman, he, you know, it wasn't like, it, it didn't sound like, it didn't seem like a dodgy thing when a salesman calls you up. Because you think, it's not like he's going, hey man, put my SDK in your app. Come on, man, do it. Right? No, it was like, Oh, you know, we got lots of clients, all this kind of, oh, we did all this stuff. And, uh, you know, and I, and I asked him to tell me about some of his clients and they said, 
Well, they don't really like to be known, and I thought, well, I don't want, you know, I just didn't want a part of it. I think in the future, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful about security. It's something we're going to have to think when we're marketing our apps and also when we add new permissions. Another thing that ad networks always ask me is, uh, you know, the first deal, I'll say, oh, you can make, you know, th they'll give me a high ECPM number or, you know, say, you know, $12, $12 ECPM or whatever. And, uh, you know, and then I'll, you know, and I'll ask a few more questions. The first thing I ask is what permissions does it need? Because I'm not adding any more permissions into my app. I have enough permissions already. You know, I have location. I have, yeah, I have things that I don't need, but the ad networks need. And this is one of the things that people are, you know, suspicious about too. They go, why does this app need my location? It's like, well, it doesn't, but I have an ad network and the ad network needs your location. But, you know, if you go get the, the, the paid version, it doesn't need that, right? And it, it's, um, it's just, it's just, it's really, really, when, when you, back in the early days of Windows, it used to be like, you used to be able to send an executable. I mean, that was one of the things working in an office environment is that you would send your, send your friend a little game, like an executable, and they would play it, you know, at their desk, or they'll, you know, they'll send something that, like a little joke file, where it would like be a little executable, and it would say, hey, I'm watching porn over here, and I'll go, oh, I can't believe I opened that, right? But then viruses became really, really big, right? And uh, you know, and once you know, and then you know, it was almost like Windows was just opening everything up, making you know, Office, you know, making the Office suite be able to do everything, access all parts of the computer. They were trying to make Office like a Word document be able to do everything, like a programming language, right? But then as security, as, as viruses started to get more prevalent, then everything had to start locking down. And now you, can, you can't hardly send anything on an email anymore. You have to zip it five times and, you know, or maybe put it on a Dropbox or you, you just can't send an email anymore because everything's getting locked down. So it'll be interesting to see how things go with the Android market this way. Uh, and, you know, whether or not we're going to have to start thinking about security more often. And also, you know, when you look at some of the apps that are out there, some of them do look really dodgy. I mean, it, you know, if I'm getting my a phone for my kids, well, we get Android because you know, because I like Android. I'm an Android user. Normally, I, I mean, I have loads of devices, but you know, my 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 phone of choice is an Android phone. But you know, when you look at the App Store, some of the stuff out there is is um, it just doesn't look very very reputable. But uh, anyway. I'd like to know what you guys think of it. Have you guys experienced malware in any way like that? Because the only way I could think of that it would get into your code, right, without you knowing about it, is if it came through an ad network, right? That, you know, that's the only way I could think of, unless you have a virus on your computer. But, you know, that, I mean, how rare is that a virus on your computer will work its way into the code of your app and then get distributed that way? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really curious as if whether or not you guys have had any problems with this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, let us know in the comments. But uh, anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.